Titan Plus City finally opened up, but King Titaners is still not open, which is a really sad story for me. <laughs> but so hopefully everyone is healthy and ready to look at more scotch. So last week I said I would be showing you some games from Kasparov, and I did find two super cool games that are one of my favorite ones from him as well. And um, another game of mine that was a favorite one of mine as well, but kind of um, I had more opportunity. But So I'm hoping to get to all three games, so if I sound like I'm rushing a little, it's because I am. <laughs> But I will stop uh, and give you time to think about some of the critical positions anyway, and feel free to pause and um, go back and forth on some of the positions as well. I'm also reading the chats from right below, so if I'm looking down, um, that would be why. Hello everyone! Who already 54. Okay, so let's jump into more scotch. So, the first one I want to show you is a game between Kasparov and Timon in the year 2000. So, um, this was actually a very educational game for me. Last week we looked at many Knight of Six lines and so will we, um, I think two more of Knight of Six this week as well and one Bishop C5. But, um, so we looked at these lines last week. And I showed you a nice game that I had with Tanya. That's she's one of my most favorite chess players, and so it was so cool for me to get a win. But so Bishop A6 is one of the main lines, and then the other one is Knight B6. So uh, in this game, Timon just went with Knight B6, and um, so there are different variations on how to play it right here for White. But Knight C3 is the um, kind of like the most acceptable one. And so Queen E6 is again another line. There is a Bishop A6 too, but Queen E6 is what Timon played. And Kasparov played Queen E4. So now there is Bishop A6, and there is also Bishop B4. I believe Bishop A6 was a game that happened after this game. Uh, Kasparov, I want to say Adams, but if I'm wrong, I apologize already, but that would have been um, Bishop A6. So, yeah. Um, here, after Bishop B4, move of, the move Bishop D2 is logical because, well, first of all, you wouldn't want to get double, um, double pawn over here because your opponent's pawn structure in that case would be stronger than yours. So, you want to keep protecting your pieces and your pawn structure and so now bishop a6 all right let's see first of all so c4 is under attack we care about c4 and we don't want to lose it so b3 is the only logical move to mm, think about well let me rephrase that b3 is definitely the most valuable candidate to think about and after b3 you get the chance to have this pawn completely protected and so now oh i was right it is Casper of adams yes thank you fragrance okay so now um the main thing that you would have to um well worry about is bishop c3 bishop c3 and d5 so this is the first position that i'm gonna uh, take a breather and ask you guys on what do you want to do with white so yeah let me know what you want to do with white do you want to take it on d5 do you want to do some dances with the queen so yeah um i'll be monitoring the chat so i can hopefully um tell you okay so keep making those candidate moves and the first um, two, the main two that you should do is take and, um, well, moving the queen around, queen h4, d4 maybe, now I'm not entirely sure about f4, but, yeah, ooh, we have in France, Ohio, nice, ooh, who is my favorite GM over the time, uh, well, um, Capablanca, Fisher, 
I think those two are my top two most favorite ones. The rest I like. Am I a grandmaster? I am a woman grandmaster and an international master. Got one more title to catch. Okay, um, so don't see much uh, suggestions about the position in the chat, so I'm gonna just go ahead and give the move. So, um, Queen H4 is the best one. And, well, thank you, Jill Wolf. Um, oh, okay, a lot of different countries. Great. Alright, so um, the thing is, if you were to take it over here, you would pre pretty much automatically fix the black's pawn structure. And now you would have to move your queen, let's say, anywhere. And you would also lose the chance to castle, so that you don't want that. So you should move your queen somewhere else. And the best way to place it is h4. And um, the reason is that after queen h4, um, after dc4, even though it looks like you would be losing a pawn, uh, you're not really. So, yeah. So the question is, after take, there are triple pawns. What do you want to do? I think, yeah, I had a, a suggestion from um, Gil Wolf about b4. So b4 is definitely interesting, but also right now, if it's black to move, black is not going to be able to take. Whoops. Black won't take because of the pin on um, the bishop. So you don't necessarily have to play b4. So, yeah. Maybe that's something to consider. So now, white to move, what do you want to do? Maybe think about developing, castling, bringing some rooks up. Ooh, long castle, whoa, whoa. Um, I like bishop e2 more. Long castle, it just feels like you're asking for it. Long castle, it's, um, no, the, everything is super opened up. The b is opened up. Um, there's always going to be risks. You're never going to actually take back. No, it's, um, no. All right, um, so after bishop e2, now, um, you kind of have to think about two main moves for black. One of them is castle. And if you were to castle, simple castle, the main thing is since this pawn is no longer on d5, the knight can jump to d5. And after that, you would simply have take. And now this is good position. Because if black were to take here, now these pawns are all going to be targeted for the rest of the game. And if black tries to do anything else, rook c1 it automatically, rook d1 automatically, and white's going to have the upper hand. So that's one thing that um, castle would face. And the other thing, so knight d5 was played in the game between Kasparov and Timon. And as we just saw, taking on c4 is, the, um, is possible. And so that's what Kasparov did. The other moves that are possible are like something like bishop d4. But uh, bishop d4 was um, going to be a little uh, unpleasant because of queen f5. Um, the other moves that were played previously, previous to this game, was something like c5. And the knight jumps a little. And there's going to be a bunch of checks. And um, I mean, this is still playable and quite pleasant. Uh, it's a fair fight, basically, but um, so this, uh, instead of c5, queen f5 was a new, dev, um, new, um, new move that came up, well, 20 years ago, but um, queen f5 was the reason bishop d4 wouldn't be so pleasant anymore. Yeah, um, so bishop takes c4. Now, let's say black tries to play frisky and play g5. Because if black were to take, take, and now c3 is defended. So if take, take, that's again the uh, same weak pawn structure that we mentioned before. 
And um, so G5 is um, black's black like trying to be tricky and trying to pick up pieces. Queen D4 is pretty much one of your only two candidate moves. So taking on D5 is possible, definitely. And after queen takes, you can pick this guy up. But your king is su super vulnerable. Like, no, never going to castle. There could be a bunch of checks. There could be queen d3s. Just um, unnecessary complications. Whereas with queen d4, everything is seems to be safe and sound. So, now black to move. I want to ask you, what move would you want to play? Would you want to take on c4 as black? Would you want to take on c3? Uh, well, maybe not take on c3, but you can just try and keep the bishop in the center or... So yeah, just let me know what you want to do. As black. Um, Alright, so there is a question from Ricket. Uh, generally, the, uh, every grandmaster how many moves can they calculate? Um, I don't think it's... I don't think it's that much about calculation. Um, the higher level you get... Actually, I've... Um, heard that from a lot of player and it, it happened to me too the less calculation you need like it's not like you can you don't calculate anymore it's more like you have a feeling of the position your in instincts are sharpened enough that you don't calculate every single move you know this move is good and you don't um you use the, your calculation to um like prove that this move is good or this move has to be eliminated but the one thing that I've noticed um, beginners do is they calculate so much unnecessary things that they get low on time, they lost, they lose their energy. So, yeah, uh, I hope that answers your question, but there is no absolute answer. I can't, I mean, um, some people can. It really depends on the position. If it's a super simple endgame, you can just keep calculating. Um, if it's a... A very complicated middle game. You have a lot of different lines to calculate, so it's um, it's not more just about ten moves. It could be like uh, ten different lines of five movers, something like that. But yeah. Okay. Um, so bishop b7. Um, that's a possibility. But bishop c4, in fact, is Black's best try because even if you were to play bishop b7 you're still never going to take on c3 so um, let's say white just castles and you can't even like your castle is not even going to be safe or something else that white could try to do and make life a little bit hard is like something with bishop c bishop b5 bishop b4 <laughs> and um, then like trying to put the bishop on c5 to just control everything you won't be able to castle anymore so that's another thing so, yeah. Um, bishop b7 is definitely a candidate move, but after seeing just the position and how um, unpleasant it is for black, as black, the best move to do is to actually take on c4. So the double pawn weakness is inevitable. Um, yeah, and that's one of the reasons that um, this game actually got to a pretty cool end game. And that's um, one of the reasons why I like this game a lot is because it shows you how nice you can get to the end game. And all right, so um, now again, knight c3 is going to be quite unpleasant for black. So black tried knight f4, especially because in this position, black's king is very, um, very unsafe. So any chance that black could have is within an endgame because if black keeps the queens in the game, then it's going to be very hard to protect the king. So knight f4, queens exchanged. Now white to move, what do you want to do with your king? Do you want to go this side? Do you want to go that side? Do you just want to put it on e2? So please just let me know um, what move you would want to play with white. So I have a question from Ben. Uh, yeah, well, um, so Ben, it's it's mainly depends on um, how much time you have and how much 
um, support you have because you gotta get if you don't have enough time or enough support it's going to be very hard to actually um, well if you don't have time you can't practice if you don't have the support to practice if you have five jobs and your student it's um, you don't have the necessary support so but yes it is always possible to improve and that's why we're here all right so um, Long Castle is actually the best one because um, you this rook gotta get in the game and um, you need to keep your king somewhere inside of the game too because you don't want to just tuck your king on h1 and um, go back and check up on it after a few moves you want to keep the king uh, close enough that it's not in immediate danger but it is close enough to be able to um, form some sort of necessary attack and support to get the king up so long castle it is and you see now this trick is gonna come and go after all those lovely pawns so those of you who also watch our twitch channel know that i'm a very religious pawn eater so <laughs> seeing this um, pawn attacks is warming my heart already all right so um Black doesn't really know what to do with the king because long castle is illegal, short castle doesn't make much sense. And so king e7 is what black tries. And now we try to bring the rook up. So my other question for you. Is it a good time to exchange a pair of rooks or would you want to just um, try to avoid it by let's say bishop d2 or... Um, well, don't have much option of ignoring it, but bishop d2 kind of avoids rook exchange. So do you want to play like bishop d2 and avoid exchanging rooks, or do you want to exchange the rooks? Um, so, Shokant Sati, your sister is 10 years old, and she wants to start chess. Well, yeah, definitely. I think, um, I mean, if it was like 20 years ago, it would have been much harder because... Um, it's like you would have to find like specific books you wouldn't know how to start but right now there are a lot of opportunities everything is online so um, yeah I, I do think that she can how I would recommend finding um, some first of all um, the first thing you should be she should be comfortable with within the chess is the squares and the pieces on how they move so as long as she's comfortable with those and like someone says g3 she knows where g3 is that's going to be a very nice stepping stone and then um there's 24 7 you can find someone who's playing chess online and streaming about it um so that's one thing to do oh hi jillian yeah um taking uh exchanging the rooks it's good yeah so um, exchanging the rooks in this specific position is pretty good because after you get these rooks so out of the position, now these pawns are way more vulnerable and now your rook e4 plan comes much smoother. So here in this position, um, if black were to try something with knight f4 to try and jump in some check somewhere, you would still do your rook a4 and um, like black's pawns are just way too um, weak to be able to pull anything off so black tried rook d5 uh, because if you were playing um, rook a4 is still pretty cool and rook a4 deserves chance to um, be considered but you don't have to rush it there is nothing that's um, going to take that away so Kasparov played king c2 just to bring a little bit more pieces in to keep the harmony. And now uh, I want you to think about what black could potentially do to um, try and see save some of the pawns maybe. Because next move is rook a4 and um, this bishop is way too strong protecting e5 giving you no chances kasparov is white timon is black um how to register um um 
I, well, the, um, I, I'm a little lost in this question because there's so many different chess websites. Chess.com is one of the cool ones. Um, chess24 has a lot of educational videos. Um, our channel has so many different video contents for any level. So uh, our Twitch channel. So maybe give those websites a little try. Okay, so um, Knight C5 possible but knight c5 doesn't do much good because you can just go after the other pawn and as soon as defends you just go back and even if not defend there's always potential bishop b4 to um, worry about because then rook c4 would be coming okay um king c2 c5 is actually the move that um, was played and the idea is to try and exchange the knight with the bishop so that we could get into an end game and Taman wanted to try his chances uh, for um, in a uh, rook end game because rook end game could potentially have chances that this position doesn't because this knight is just very defensive alright so c5 Rook goes to a4, keeping up with our plan, knight d4, and now what do you want to do? Do you want to take the knight or do you want to let the knight stay here? You move the king from check and um, yeah, just let me know which move you would like to um, try with white. But yeah, besides me, who else is excited for some um, high quality chess with cool commentary from the club, huh? Club chess is happening in about a week. So hopefully you've all heard about it. And yeah, it will be pretty cool. Not as cool as actually seeing players over the board and having real life chess, but still cool with the situation. Well, be careful because you're under check, so you can't um, ignore that. So, um, playing something like King B2 is possible, but the problem is something like Rook E5, and then Rook E2 is jumping. So, we don't really want to give that opportunity, even if take, take, take. Now, Rook gets into the second rank, and ouchie, ouchie. So, you don't want to give your opponent chances to get his position better so we take that knight and now we take that pawn and the cool thing is if rook takes over here now um well first of all you could take and now if king d6 you could even take the other one and um these two would be past pawns hand in hand and even if you um somehow manage to get your king to d3 that's also another possibility i'm not the biggest fan of playing king d3 right now because king d6 and um you take there's still rook e2 and it's much better to have that two pass pawns rather than the other um things like check up take there's you can just take and your two pawns up the other one is falling this would be quite pleasant to play with white so black plays king d7 and the same way we've been talking about king d3, now you get the chance to actually do this king d3. And rook e5 doesn't really um, pose that threat anymore with rook e2, because take and rook e2 is a big threat. And you can't really save this pawn, so the best you can do is keep that king on d3. So there won't be any more intruders to your um, e2 okay um okay so let's say rook takes on e5 now my question to you why to move what do you want to do be careful because if you take there's going to be rook e2s so a little bit of getting a little bit of end game warm up for dennis what is the link um check it out it's a tournament that 
is going to happen with uh, four of U.S. best players and our super super cool commentary team. It's going to be online, so I'm a little excited to see how that's going to work out. So A4 is definitely interesting. Rook A4 is definitely interesting. I kind of prefer Rook A4 and so did Kasparov because um, your Rook's job here is kind of done right now and you want to come eat some pawns. And uh, Rook, C, Rook A4, the main thing that you have to calculate, the only move logical for black to do is C5. Now, the question for you is, um, as white, how do you want to use this C5? You have a lot of different options and um, that's good because it means you have more chances to start um, getting holes from your opponents. So, uh, G3, uh, oh alright, so I already had someone answer this question. Um, it's going to be hard for me to pronounce it. But, um, Tsubukura, I tried, you are correct, B4. B4 is the best one, and uh, very logical too, right? So giving a check is definitely something that you should think about, but it kind of keep mm, pushes the king up, and if the king gets to D5, it's going to be quite unpleasant for you, even though it doesn't pose any immediate threats, if black were to um, just be able to save his pawns and get the king on d5, it would be quite uh, unpleasant. So, b4 it is. Now, um, if black were to play king c6, you just take and you play rook c4. This is a winning pawn end game. You have outside pass pawn, and um, we've done a lot of this in the king and warfare class that we had on Twitch. Um, so, this is winning. This pawn in the game is winning. So, um, the two main moves to calculate for black is king e6 and um, c4 because we always have to take a look at possible checks. So, I would like the, you viewers to take a little bit of time and calculate c4 and king e6 and let me know which one would you prefer to play. Or if you find something cooler than these two, let me know and we'll go we will go over it so yeah this clutches is supposed to be pretty cool and i'm not entirely sure i don't know if that is confirmed but i've heard that um, there could potentially be more international events in june like this and um they we do want to be able to um hold real life tournaments but it's just quite impossible right now but nothing is um, nothing is cancelled everything is simply postponed for right now so we are keeping our hopes up all right let's see what do we have here c4 definitely cool f5 um all right, so the problem is if you were to play f5, simply take, and you would lose this guy. Um, king d6, we just looked at king c6, so it's similar to that. Um, all right, so let's take a look at c4 check. So c4 check, um, king takes, all right, so hold on. If c4 check, do you think you should take on c4 or d4? That's a good question. So yeah, try your best and yeah, the idea is to try and get on the second rank. You are correct, Brian Clark. So that kind of answers it. If white were to take king d4, there is rook e2. And this gives black chances to find some wiggle room. And uh, right now, king c4 is the better one. And now you get the chance to try with rook a5 to like cut the king and attack some pawns. There is a chance with rook a7 as well and um, trying to do rook a5 but rook has to be on a5 to attack pawns and to control the position better. And after rook a5, take, 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 take 
and um, it's a good chance to win, but black also gets chances to for a better defense. All right, so let's go back up, up, up. All right, so that's c4. c4 would be black's best chance in this position, but black tried with king e6. And now, what do you think white should do? Should white take on c5 or should white push? I have seen in the comments uh, mix of both in the um, chat. Uh, Yaroslav said uh, king e6 take, take rook takes d4, possible. But um, I kind of think b5 is much better. Because now, whoops, well, check first and then b5. Because now you get the chance to um, have two pass pawns. If the king were to go to d5, you simply have rook a5 and you are going to try for the end game, and that would be super winning. The pawn end game is extremely winning, so no questions there. So if king f5, now b5. Let's say rook tries d5, some c4 check chances. You just take that, and you take that. And one last one, one last um, question for you guys in this game. Why to move? What do you want to do? Do you think Kasparov is losing? Maybe a little bit? Or do you see any tricks to win this game for white? Oh, all right, so I already have a no. No to what? <laughs> all right, good, everyone sees g4, nice. Proud of everyone. g4 is the key move. So take, you get check, and rook comes and defends the queen. So, um, it is quite important to be able to see this after you king c you play king c4 because if king c4 d3 if you didn't have that g4 let's say um if your opponent's pawn was actually on g4 you would be a little bit um how to say stuck yeah let's go with that so um it is very important to uh, calculate in this position. Remember how earlier I said not necessarily every move you have to calculate everything? Well, right now you do. Because you see the opponent wants to play c4, and after c4, d3 would be possible. So if you couldn't see rook c6, the move you have to play is something like rook a3, or rook c6 is okay, and then if you don't see this last move g4, then you would here you would simply take with the, the rook and it is um, still you still have advantage not that it's not like a super advantage but it's advantage and this is a still very fightable white has the upper hand so um, just if you don't see everything like if you don't see that last g4 don't play it don't play it all right so this is the first game that I wanted to show you I don't think we will get to the other Kasparov game because, well, um, I, I'm trying to talk fast, but still, it's not going as fast as it should. Okay, so now I want to show you a game of myself that it was baby Dorsa, not too baby, I was 16. And um, I was, this is 2014, I was hunting down WIM norms. Ah, who, need, who needs those right now, right? And <laughs> I'm kidding, everybody needs every title. But um, this was, I think, my first, oh yeah, it was my first time traveling alone and uh, in Politiken Cup in Denmark. So shout out to that. Uh, it was pretty cool. And um, <laughs> no, it wasn't when I got the bad time drive. It's, I got the bad time drive last year. I don't know where it came from, actually. <laughs> And all right, so let's get to this game. This was, I remember, last round of um, the Helsinger tournament, Politiken Cup. Uh, that's actually where I played Alejandro Ramirez, the current SLU coach, and I lost horribly. But, um, well, I'm here now. He's my coach. Have a nice scholarship. Eh, I can let go of that one loss, right? 
Okay, so uh, this game is I played against a uh, Norwegian uh, Solomon. I want to say John Solomon. Johan. Johan. Oh, my bad. Still. Oops. Eh, John, Johan, same. It's not the same. All right. Um, he, I believe he's a grandmaster now. And um, so this was kind of quite unpleasant for him, for me, the little girl, to take a draw out of him. But still. Oh, I gave up the results already. Ooh. Anyways. So. Um, this was a fun scotch. I haven't shown you anything in Bishop C5 last week or this week. So it should be fun to look at this. I really like this knight b3, knight c3. I've uh, got recommendation to play this when I was a kid, actually, actually a kid, like 2010. And I like it, and I've been doing it ever since. I mean, I mix up, uh, but knight b3 is still my favorite one. Uh, the idea is quite simple, like, put the queen on e2, and if you castle too fast, I'll do this bishop g5. If you don't do that, then I'll just play like simple bishop e3, um, f3, castle, woo, space, attack. If I'm not wrong, 2014, it's been a long time, so memory can get a little foggy, but I do think that um, Harry Marjan Negi had a nice um, like series on chess base that really helped me, so if you want to copy paste me that's where I got most of my intel but I could still be wrong and it could not be there anymore so but that's where I remember it was six years ago god I'm getting old okay so queen e2 he tries his luck with castle and then just bishop g5 my idea was simple if you were to try and play h6 I would be so happy I would do this bishop e3 and I would simply do the long castle and now I have a full target on h6 to go after later on so um, that's something that you can try to provoke your opponents with bishop g5 so he tried knight d4 to, uh, okay one thing to keep in mind is whoops taking makes it a little uh, uncomfortable because now your king is all um, opened up a little so That's why queen d2 is the best move. Take, you simply take back with the a-pawn. And now, a uh, question for you guys. What do you want to do? Do you feel like playing it some um, fun stuff at h4? I'm not saying you should, I'm just asking you. Or do you want to just play bishop e3 back like what we were talking about a little bit before? And I'm going to look in the chat um, there's a question from Victor any defense for e4 there are many defenses for e4 um, Karokan, French e5 Sicilian, Nidorf there are a lot of things um, you just have to find what feels right to you Bishop e3, yeah, let's keep it normal Not no time to get all freaky alright, agreed Bishop e3 after bishop e3, bishop h6, uh, also, okay, so the thing is, if you had more pieces, you could definitely think about mm, sacrificing, but you don't have any pieces in the attack except for the queen, so it wouldn't be very logical to try and um, do that. So, yeah, bishop h4 is also a possibility, but um, bishop h4 is kind of on the way for your pawns, because you want to start a pawn march. Alright, so I did this bishop e3, and now he wants to play d5. If it's black to move, black's playing d5. So, long castle to stop d5. Um, d6. Ooh, there's a question if bishop h4 would, uh, would be possible to play knight e4. Ooh. Hmm. Um, my initial thought was something with queen f4, but I don't think that works. So, yeah, I guess that's why, actually, yeah, good eye. Uh, I was thinking 
Initially, I thought queen f4, and if you play knight f6, that's just perfect. But now I see there could be a lot of different um, potential ideas. First of all, if I play g5, what do you do? Because if take, there is rook e8. So, yeah, bishop h4 um, doesn't, it just feels wrong. I, to me, I don't like to have my pieces hanging because it uh, gives opponent chances to go after them. So I always want to have them protected by something else. So to me, bishop e3 comes naturally. But I see why bishop h4 um, sh would need more um, attention. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so castle, now d6. So remember how I was telling you about forming an attack with f3, g4? Now is the time. You get your g4 out. You get your h4 out. So here I was quite happy. I was like, everything is going good. My position is lovely. I'm pushing pawns. Now, it is white. Uh, it is black to move, and black played g5. And I was just like, why, man? Why would it take away my g5? And the simple answer is because um, g5 actually wasn't the best move for black. But the problem for me was that I understand that I have to take it. And um, that was a good thing because if you were to play h5, you would kind of be closing it up. So taking is the best one. Here I decided to be uh, normal and develop with bishop c4, which was not the best move. So now I am going to ask you, what do you think is the best move for white? And no, it's not something super crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're correct, you shouldn't really move the pawns uh, on that side. Alright, yeah, knight b5. Um, knight b5, wow, cool. You're very fast. Tasubukura. Um, I am still trying on the pronunciation. So knight b5 was actually super strong, and the idea is if you were to play rook e7, I would just do rook knight d4. And next move, I might try knight f5, might, because, because if I got to this um, knight f5 idea, then this pawn would be super, super weak. So that's something that would be really pleasant for me. And, alright, so, after knight d4, black's best try would be something with... Um, knight d5 because queen f4 and the end game would be more pleasant for white because I can just take on f4 and put the knight back on e2 and pick up the pawn least of all so knight d5 queen d2 you two try knight f4 now you do your bishop c4 or you can try with queen h2 now white has a very organized attack you got the queen on h2 the knight on d4 is way better than it was on c3 Bishop c4 is coming next, and this is the way I should have went about it, but I didn't. So, um, let's go back to bishop c4. So I played this bishop c4, and after bishop c4, he played bishop e6. I took, which I think I should have played king b1, just because it provides more... Um, because black is going to try and push some pawns, so this would give me the chance to um, keep it all tied up. All right. So take, take. Now I realize that I do want this knight to be in the attack, so I tried the knight e2. I did the king b1 because it was necessary. I did the knight g3. Now, question for you. Do you think knight g3 is good? Because... Right now, I don't. In the game, I did. Alright. Oh, that's a good close. Okay, so why to move? Who wants to do what? What do you guys want to do? Yeah. 
Yeah, you are right. F4 is the better try. Um, I'm kind of curious. What is your rating on um, Tesubukura? I'm still trying. Never been the, the strongest in pronunciation. Yeah, so uh, Knight's G3 is not actually that um, that good. F4 is the best one. And after take, Knight take, White has good advantage. But I didn't realize this over the board and I missed my chance. So I went with Knight G3. My idea was to play Knight H5, take, you take... Mm, my idea was to play, whoops. Knight H5, take... I take with the rook, and I dabble my rooks, and I have this holded, everything super pleasant. But um, there is a devilish rook h8 that stops it all. And after rook h8, knight h5 didn't really work anymore. Now, black to move, what do you think black should do? My opponent found a very nice move, and that kind of stopped it. Oh, nice, 2200. Yeah, I was gonna say somewhere at least 2100, but alright, you're good. Well, glad you're here and enjoying it. Yeah, Fragrance, you're correct, King H6. And so the idea is after King H6, uh, my attack is kind of stopped. Even when I try to bring more pieces, I simply don't have enough attack to put up. Even when doubling up, even when trying to bring more pieces, it's just not enough. So I tried the different angle. And yep, exactly, it was rest in peace to my attack. And now I was the one getting a little bit attacked. But I tried to um, be a little tricky and go to the 8th rank, which seemed like a nice idea. And now... Uh, it's white to move, and I realize that if I do try to go to the end game, it's not going to be that pleasant because there is going to be this um, rook f1, and this is going to be quite painful, at least in the end game. So, I do not really want to get into a worse end game, so I try to keep the game alive, keep my queen alive with something like queen g8. But right now, black is slightly better, because my attack is pretty much dead. And he did this rook f1 check, and now my king is in a very... My king is, well, sort of safe, but at the same time, it's not really doing much. So, um, after this, he just went queen f6 to protect king, because I was in queen g6 mate. And now, um, I still tried to fight with queen e8. Because also another threat is rook h8. So queen e8 was sort of necessary. So if rook h8, I would have queen d7. I'm still trying to poke around and see if there's anything in the position. And um, he did slight repetition. I did this rook g3 because I was hoping to get some rook h3s. And... I think here I finally managed to get a perpetual. Yeah, because here after queen f4, I got the chance to go with queen g8. And I got this perpetual. Because even if the queen goes back to f6, I can just go back with queen e8. And he didn't know how to advance his position, so that was um, something that was nice. I kind of... Um, the idea of going behind the king was pretty smart. Because I realized my attack is dead and I didn't really like the pawn structure. Everything was a little uh, wobbly. So it was pretty cool to be able to get this um, draw and end the tournament on a nice note. And yeah, so that's the two games that I showed you today. I hope you enjoyed the Kasparov game and the Dorsa game. <laughs> so um, tune in for Dennis right after me. And... Yeah, feel free to post your comments after, and I do come and check it afterwards, so if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Yeah, well, thank you, and have a nice day.